welcome back. We left you in the last lesson looking at the filtering UI, but we still need to hook those into the model. So jump back into your editor and find the model slash messages.php file. Find the populate state method that we looked at in a previous lesson and position your cursor at the start of its code. Then find the snippet called backend list model search filters in brackets state and insert it. Once again, this snippet is straight code and let's have a look at what we've got. First, we've initialized a variable called dollar $app and this is going to hold the Joomla application object. The application object is the thing that actually runs the Joomla CMS and pulls together the component and the template to make our web page. There's a jfactory method called getApplication that we use to get this object. Now, why do we need that? Well, Joomla has this neat feature of being able to remember the state of a particular variable in the request and there's a very useful utility method in the japplication class called, and it's a bit of a mouthful, get user state from request. This has a number of arguments and also optional filters for data sanitization. The first value we're wanting to get is the search text string from the request. We do this by invoking the get user state from request method and passing it at least two arguments. The first is the context by which we want the Joomla application to remember this variable. We need the context so that we don't get the same search text appearing on all of the similar lists for all the other components installed on the site. So we need to identify this search text uniquely for this page. Fortunately for us, JModelList is aware of its own context and, not surprisingly, this is available in a protected variable called context and for our case the value would be com underscore hello dot messages. All we need to do is add a string that uniquely identifies this variable and we've used dot filter dot search. All that gives us is a name by which we can set and get a variable between page loads. The second argument is the name of the request variable and you'll notice it's the same name we used in the search text input field. So what does this all do? Well Joomla looks for the filter underscore search in the request. If it finds it, it returns the value, but also remembers that value. If it doesn't find filter underscore search in the request, then it looks to see if it has been previously set, and if it has, it will return the value. This is how Joomla can remember what list page you are on and the state of search boxes and drop down filters when you go away from the list page and then come back again in the same session. After we've got the value, we inject it into the model state by using jmodel's setState method. We just pass the method the name of the state variable, filter.search, and the value we want to assign to it. The rest of the code is very similar. For the viewing access filter, we're looking for filter underscore access in the request, and we've also added two more arguments. The third argument is the default value to use in the event that no value has been supplied and no previous value has been remembered. The fourth argument is the casting filter for the return value. In this case, we want the value to be cast as an integer. When we have the value, we set it in the filter.access model state variable. Next is the published filter, looking for filter underscore published in the request and setting filter.published in the model state. Next is the category filter looking for filter underscore category underscore ID in the request and setting filter dot category underscore ID in the model state. And last the language filter looking for filter underscore language in the request and setting the filter dot language in the model state. Now we need to change the query to adjust for the new state we've set in the model. Slide down to the get list query method and position your cursor just before the ordering is handled. Look for the snippet called backend list model search filters in brackets query and insert it. Let's have a look at what this does. The first filter is for the search text and we're going to do a couple of things here. First, we'll get the search string from the model and put it into a variable called dollar search. If the variable's empty, we'll ignore it. If it's not empty, we want to set up a search. However, I want a special case for searching the record by its ID. So I'm testing if the first segment of the string is id colon. If it is, I'm going to add a where condition to the query equivalent to where the id equals that part of the string after the id colon prefix. 
Notice that I'm casting this to an integer. You always need to be mindful of user input and always sanitize it in an appropriate format. The golden rule is never trust user input. Moving on, if we don't find that prefix, we'll set up a general search of the title and alias fields. The previous case showed how to sanitize an integer. The next part shows you how to sanitize a free text string correctly when evaluating with a like keyword in the WHERE clause. Any string we put into a query must be properly escaped and quoted. There are two methods in the database class that do this for us, quote and get escaped. The get escaped method ensures that any characters are properly escaped. This either stops errors from being generated by the query, but more importantly it's one of the ways to help prevent malicious SQL injection attacks. The quote method runs the string through get escaped and then wraps the string in legal quotes based on the database engine. In MySQL's case, that would be single quotes. Most of the time you'll use the quote method. We're going to use the like keyword to search for any records where the title or alias is like the search text. To do this, we add the percent wildcard to either side of the string. This basically says look for any record where the search text occurs anywhere in the title or anywhere in the alias fields. If, for example, you omitted the first percent character, this would look for results that start with the search text. However, MySQL also has another wildcard character, the underscore, which matches a single character. We generally don't want to allow this, so we need to use a second argument in the getEscaped method set to true. This means it will escape any wildcards in the search text, such as the percent character or the underscore. The end result is a line of code with a getEscaped method nested in a quote method. If you want to allow percent or underscore in the search text, then use the quote method on its own. But remember, while this may be okay in the back end, where you might trust users, always do the double sanitization as shown for the front end, otherwise your site will be subject to a very nasty denial of service attack. The next block of code is simply adding another WHERE condition if the access filter is set. Note that we expect the value to be an integer, so we cast the value accordingly. It's also worth noting that when calling the WHERE method in the JDatabase query class multiple times, all those conditions are glued together with AND keywords. The next block looks at the published filter. This is another conditional block depending on the value of the filter. If the filter is numeric, we just add a WHERE condition to test for. However, if the value is exactly equal to an empty string, we want to show records where the published field is 1 or 0. This occurs when the published filter is not selected and gives the effect of hiding any archived or trashed records from day-to-day -day viewing. You can obviously tune that default condition to whatever suits you or your users best, but I think showing just published and unpublished records works well. The next block looks at filtering on the category ID. Again, we're testing to see if the value of the filter we got from the model state is either numeric or an array. If it's numeric, we add a simple condition to the query where the category underscore ID field is equal to that specific value. If the value is an array, we need to do a few things. First, we need to sanitize the array to ensure that we only have integers. The most effective way to do this is by using the jArray helper class and a method in that class called toInteger. That will convert all the elements of the array into integers so that we can safely add them to the query. Next, we use PHP's implode function to convert the array into a string of comma-separated integers. Finally, we add the condition to the query, enclosing our list of numbers in round brackets. The last filter looks at the language filter. If that is set, we add another condition and notice that we only use the quote method this time. Because we aren't using the like keyword in the query, there's no need for the special treatment like we used for the search text. We're almost there. The last thing we need to do is extend a method in the JModelList class called GetStoreID. This method is already silently working for you to handle the list pagination, but we need to adjust it for the new filters we've added. Scroll down to the end of the class and look for a snippet named backend list model get store ID. This snippet has one variable for the since doc block tag, so if you're happy with that, just insert it.
This method is used to build cache keys for the list. To uniquely identify the key, we need to add some markers for the search filters. The method takes a string and you can see we've added a delimiter and then the state of the search, access, published, category and language filters. We then just hand that string off to the parent method for further processing. Well, that's it for adding the filters to the list. There's not much to see yet because we have no data, but you could try changing a few of the filters and check that they hold state when you browse away from the page and then come back again. In the next lesson, we'll add one of the final pieces to the list view, and that is the list subcontroller, which allows some of the clickable list icons, like the published state, to work. Thanks for hanging in there, and see you back real soon.